So good evening. Thank you all for coming tonight. Um, it is my great pleasure and privilege to be back at the Japan Society. I would like to thank Sekiya-san uh, for inviting me to come and share this special evening with you and with the Reverend Asahina uh, of Jochiji Temple in Kamakura. Um, his presence here is made possible by the Kanagawa Prefectural Government, which is co-sponsoring uh, this Get to Know Kanagawa series. And he is really our main guest of honor tonight. My presence here is purely ancillary to his, um, so I'm just support staff. Um, my job here tonight is to simply provide a general but hopefully engaging introduction to the trifecta of religion, art, and politics as it developed in the medieval capital city of Japan, uh, of Kamakura. There we go. Specifically, after a general historical introduction to the shogunate in Kamakura and the transmission of Zen into Japan, I will walk us through three pairs of patron-priest collaborations that established some of the great temples of Kamakura's Gozan, or five mountain, five temples system, and that also triggered the extraordinary artistic development of Zen ink painting in Japan. I have limited my talk to just Kamakura because, as Martin Kolkut says, Kamakura was the vital center of Rinzai Zen diffusion in the late Kamakura period, not just because of the Hojo regent's enthusiasm for Zen, but because of a succession of Chinese emigre monks who came to Kamakura to teach. Because of these Chinese masters and or their Japanese disciples, quote, young Zen monks felt impelled to go to Kamakura in order to test their metal and insight. And this tradition of studying with the master continues on to this day, and we have a rare opportunity to do so tonight. So after my talk, Reverend Asahina um, will talk a little more uh, together, we'll talk about the more practical side of Zen and demonstrate just um, how it is practiced in his historic Kamakura temple of Jochiji. This is really an extraordinary opportunity to learn and experience one of Japan's most distinctive and deeply insightful living traditions. So first, to orient ourselves, Kamakura is a historic temple city on the east coast of Kanagawa Prefecture, about an hour south of modern day Tokyo. But back in the late 12th century, before it became the capital of Japan, it was considered to be really provincial. It was far removed from the traditional center of power and civilization down in Kyoto, where the emperor resided. But then the first shogun, Minamoto Yoritomo, defeated the Imperial Navy at Dan no Ura in 1185. And if you're interested in, these, in reading about the Genpei Civil Wars, um, read the Heike Monogatari, right, which tells the tale from the loser's side. Right? Um, history is not always written by the victors. Right? Um, but after overthrowing the emperor with the help of his in-laws, the powerful Hojo clan, um, Minamoto re relocated the capital to their home base at Kamakura. Here we see a much later imagined likeness of his wife, Hojo Masako, which reminds us, yes, that after, behind every man, uh, behind every great man, there is a great woman and her family, in this case. Um, for the next 140 years, roughly, from 1192 to 1333, the shoguns and the Hojo regents ruled Japan under a military dictatorship known as the Bakfu. Now, their first order of business was to legitimate their new regime. Right? So they looked to Buddhism, which had historically always unified and ritually protected the state. This is a phenomenon known as Chingo Koka Bukyo, or the pacification and protection of the family state. And it was a mutually beneficial symbiosis of church and state, where rulers gained religious legitimacy in exchange for their political patronage of temples, and conversely, right, religious institutions gained material state support for their moral support of the state. Right? It's kind of nice. Um, arrangement. So, for example, in, in 1252, a great bronze statue of Buddha was cast in Kamakura to replicate the Daibutsu, or Great Buddha, of the, of the ancient 8th century capital of Nara. Um, now, technically, Kamakura's monumental statue depicts Amida, the Buddha of infinite light and life, um, uh, which, was more po which was more popular at the time than the old uh, cosmic Birushan of Buddha of the Nara period. But this kind of strategic philanthropy and the tactical use of religious imagery to protect political clout clearly signaled that, Kamakura, that the Kamakura Bakufu was just as powerful as the first centralized state of Japan. But then, 
The Bakfu went a step further as they sought out new sources of authority and legitimacy to help validate and strengthen their new rule. The Bakufu actively patronized a new form of Buddhism that was just coming into Japan from China at the time. Zen was the latest and greatest thing from the continent, but Zen wasn't just, it didn't just carry religion, it carried culture as well. It carried new medical technologies like tea, new architectural and engineering techniques, and all the latest developments in the sophisticated arts of the brush, that is painting, calligraphy, and poetry. As a result, by leveraging the networks and erudition of the Zen Buddhist monks who could read and write Chinese, Kamakura quickly acquired a reputation for being a cutting edge, metropolitan, cosmopolitan center that was the site of broad intellectual currents and cross-cultural exchange. So what is Zen? It is the simple yet fundamental practice of seated meditation, Zazen, that is designed to illuminate or awaken the sitter to the nature of reality. It began with Buddha back in the 6th century BCE India, the patriarch Bodhidharma brought it to China in the 6th century CE, and then the Japanese pioneers, Eisai and Dogen, studied abroad in Sung Dynasty China, received the mind-to-mind -mind transmission, and brought it back to Japan in the late 12th and early 13th centuries, respectively. Once home, they established themselves at temples in Kyoto, but both eventually felt the need to escape the stifling sectarian intrigues of the old capital. The Rinzai Zen monk Eisai first arrived in Kamakura in 1199 and established one of Japan's first Zen temples at Jufukuji. Then the Soto Zen monk Dogen was invited to Kamakura in 1247 from his home base in Eheji over on the Japan seaside, um, but he only stayed about six months in Kamakura before returning to Eheji. It's not clear if he declined the Hojo's offer to establish a new temple or if they just didn't like his Soto style of teaching, uh, but apparently it just didn't go very well. Um, so instead of relying on these um, returned Japanese study abroad students, uh, the Hojo regents decided to go back to the source. They decided to go to directly import authentic Chinese emigre monks of the Rinzai lineage um, as the Song dynasty weakened before finally falling to the Mongols in 1279. So tonight, I'd just like to hi highlight three Hojo regents, or Shikken, who were important early benefactors of Kamakura Zen. Namely, I'll be talking about Hojo Tokiyori, who founded Ken Choji, Tokimune, who established Engakuji and two related temples, and Saratoki, whose patronage, whose patronage resulted in really advancing the arts of Zen. In fact, these samurai donors are so invested in their project that they depict themselves in the style of their Chinese Zen masters. So can you tell who is the sage and who is the samurai here? If I don't label them, it's really hard to distinguish the sacred from the secular figure. They're both dressed in monk's robes with shaved heads and three-quarter profile, seated in full lotus position, kekkafusa, on the dharma seat draped with a hapi cloth. These are the standard pictorial conventions of Chinese and Japanese Zen master portraits called chinzo. The warrior rulers are not just playing dress up though. From all accounts, they were genuine practitioners. Okay, so how did you do? Were you right? Now that I've labeled them, we can see that Hojo Tokiyori invited Ranke Doryu from China, and Ranke established the great Ken Choji Temple in the northern hills of Kamakura in 1253. I'm gonna be using mostly the Japanese readings of their, uh, of their names since we're at the Japan Society tonight. So Tokiyori also invited another Chinese monk named Wuan Puning, who was in Japan from 1260 to 65, um, but he'll figure later on in the foundation legends of um, the Reverend Asahina's temple at uh, Jochiji. Um, Ken Choji was the first of the so-called five mountains, uh, or Gozan system of Zen temples. By the way, Kyoto later copied this idea and built their own set of Gozan temples once Zen spread down there during the next Ashikaga shogunate. Um, Ken Choji features the latest cantilevered construction techniques of the Song, and its general layout reflects the biaxial plan of China's greatest Zen temples. The distinctive left-hand monk's hall and right-hand kitchen bisect the central spine made up of the Sanmon Gate, Buddha Hall, and Dharma Hall. The bath and latrine are at the foot of the prototypical seven hall sanctuary, or Shichidof Garan. This Zen layout was different from older temple compounds in Japan, which ideally aligned along a simple straight north-south axis, but not always. The second 
patron priest pairing is Hojo Tokimune, who invited the Chinese master Mu Gak Sogem to establish Engakuji in Kamakura in 1282, in part to celebrate the failed Mongol attempts to invade Japan. In terms of material culture, I find it interesting to see the Chinese style of furniture in both Dharma seats, but only Mugaku holds the abbot's scepter, or Rui, indicating his ceremonial status, whereas Tokimune just has his hand in folded meditation. Engakuji was well construct, as well was constructed in the Chinese style, or Karayo, uh, or more accurately, the Zen Shuyo, um, or Zen Zen sect uh, style of architecture with double hip gabled roof lines and fluted bell or lantern shaped window, windows, the katomado style, among other architectural features. For example, the Shariden relic hall at Engakuji, shown here, dates to 1285, was restored in 1563, and is a designated national treasure. It's, a, it's really important to recall that Japan, and Kamakura especially, um, has preserved a lot of Buddhist material and visual culture that simply no longer exists in China due to all of its historic purges, uh, of which right, the Cultural Revolution is but the most recent. Now, the historic temple of Jochiji that we're going to be hearing about tonight um, is a branch temple of Engakuji that dates to around 1283. It's located directly between Kenchoji and Engakuji in northern or Kitakamakura part of town. A record dated to 1299 includes it in the Gozan system, and in its final form, it was ranked fourth in the five uh, great Zen temples of Kamakura. It enshrines three Buddhas of past, present, and future that are important cultural properties of the Kanagawa prefecture. This triple arrangement of sacred images, or honzon, clearly derives from contemporary Zen temples in China. We have line drawings from a Soto Zen monk named Gikai, who went to China in uh, the 1260s, um, and it clearly uh, outlines, uh, it says sanzon, or three holy images, three sacred images um, in the center of the Buddha hall there. So um, there's historical documentation for this. This is a bit speculative now, and I apologize for this very texty slide here, but given all the patron priest conflations that we have seen so far, um, I wonder if Jochiji's triple foundation legends were perhaps crafted and grafted to fit onto this triple trope. I wonder if Jochiji's three purported Hojo patrons, or alternately the stories of its three supposed founding abbots, also symbolize and reflect the three Buddhas of past, present, and future. The history here is a bit vague, but there's a pleasing symmetry to these foundation legends that I find fun and interesting to contemplate, at least. Now, a second temple associated with Engakuji is Tokeji, also located just down the road. I think it's always important to include gender considerations whenever possible, especially in this androcentric discussion of samurai warriors and a male monastic clergy. And I think we need to take a moment to go beyond just Hojo Masako's marriage politics that helped to start the Kamakura Shogunate in the first place. I think we need to consider women's agency and autonomy during the feudal age as limited as it may seem by today's standards for self-determination. So with that said, in 1285, just three years after Hojo Tokimune had Engakuji built, his wife, Hojo Kakusanni, established Tokeji Convent, which was originally one of the five great nunneries in Kamakura, the Amagozan. Tokeji soon gained a reputation as a popular women's refuge temple, or kakekomi dera. Buddhist convents like this one served as a kind of social safety valve throughout the medieval period, functioning simultaneously as a girl's orphanage, maybe widow's haven, an all-women's college or seminary, right? Um, and what perhaps we might call today, right, a safe house for um, survivors of what we would say, what we would call domestic violence, right? The rule of thumb back then was three years in sanctuary was tantamount to an official divorce. So um, Tokeji's official founding abbot was Kakusanni's son, Hojo Sadatoki, but the convent apparently prohibited men until 1902. And this is interesting because this is well after 1872 when Japan's inverse prohibition against women entering sacred mountains, the Nyonin Kekka ban, was lifted. So that's impressive. I'll get off my soapbox now. Right. This brings us to our third and final patron-priest combination. That same son of hers, Sadatoki, invited the Chinese Zen master Yishan Yining to Kamakura. And for some reason, this um, Zen master is usually called by his, Chinese, by his Chinese name more often. 
His arrival was delayed because he was suspected of being a Yuan spy for the Mongols. Um, but once he settled in, he successfully led several major Zen, Zen monasteries in Kamakura and also Kyoto, um, and really elevated both Gozan temple systems to higher levels of cultural sophistication. Part of Yishan Yining's artistic, calligraphic, and literary ethos included an arts entrance exam and rigorous training for monks. One of his students was the great Zen garden designer, calligrapher, and teacher of Emperor Godaigo, Muso Soseki, who incidentally res resided briefly at Engakuji and Jochichi around 1326 to 27 while founding a new Kamakura temple at Zuisenji. So to help him train his students in Zen ink painting and calligraphy, Ishan Ning and his many Chinese predecessors imported into Japan an impressive collection of Chinese Zen ink paintings known as sumie. Imported masterpieces such as this one, Muchi's Crane, Kaunon, and Gibbons, currently held by Daitokuji in Kyoto, um, served as models or examples for later generations of Japanese Zen artist monks to emulate, monks like the 16th century Sesson. Now, Sesson grew up in the northeastern Kanto region and visited Kamakura and Odobara in the mid-16th century. He gained the favor of the Hojo clan and had access to their collection of Muchi and also Seshu, um, uh, Seshu paintings, another great Sumie painter from down in Kyoto. Um, so as art historian Helmut Brinker explained, Quote, Sesson kept studying these models throughout his artistic career. It is therefore not surprising that he came to master their spontaneous abbreviating techniques so successfully, end quote. But instead of painting Muchi's crane, Sesson here prefers painting herons or other birds. And instead of Muchi's gibbons, um, Sesson prefers a more playful variation on the theme um, by depicting gibbons playing with a crab or reaching for grapes on a vine, as we see here on your right. Now, let me take a moment to explain, gibbons are a thing in Zen, right? We are gibbons, gibbons are us. We too have these monkey minds that kind of jump around, grasping onto branch to branch of thought. Um, and at the same time, however, these gibbons grasping for the grapevines makes me think of a famous Zen koan or case study for contemplation. The scenario is this. A man is hanging over a precipice, grasping only onto a vine. There are tigers above him, there are tigers below him, and there are mice gnawing away at the vine. And in this impossible situation between life and death at any moment, he sees a delicious berry, and he exclaims, how sweet. That's it. Now, on the one hand, this episode reveals just how easily distracted we are by pleasures. But on the other hand, this episode reveals just how uh, this vid little vignette also teaches the important Zen lesson of just being present in each and every moment. Each moment is perfect, just as it is. Even in the midst of our mortality, or maybe precisely because of it, we can appreciate it fully. You are aware of the transience and interdependence of life, and therefore you are grateful for every gift it offers. You experience a time of stillness beyond hope and fear, expectation, and regret. That is Zen. Even within the delusions of our monkey minds, we can find moments of true and authentic reality. It's just a question of fully waking up and inhabiting those moments completely as part of the whole. Think about that the next time you eat a grape. In contrast to Muchi's central canon, um, for example, though, Sesson instead tends to favor images, or calligraphy in this case, of the big fat happy Buddha Hote, uh, Hote Chisho, or Hote the priest. Um, even if you can't read the script, you can still identify Hote by his telltale monk, by his telltale monk's staff held at an angle across his inscribed body, so to speak. And you can imagine Sesson's breath while he is brushing this calligraphic painting by first taking in a deep breath and then slowly exhaling and extending that first character of Ho. Day, right? Um, uh, uh, to indicate his big fat happy belly, right? Uh, that breath and that sustained brushwork um, is life giving. And once again, we see that this textural figure is flanked by gibbons, reaching up for the moon above on the left, or reaching down for the moon's reflection in water below on your right. These gibbons were inked by Senka, one of Sesson's contemporaries and probable collaborators down in Kyoto. Gibbons reaching for the moon is another stock symbol in Zen for the deluded mind which mistakes the map for territory, the menu for the meal. 
That is, we silly gibbons rely on images or aspirational ideas about enlightenment instead of actually embodying and manifesting the full moon of illumination ourselves, like Hote does in the center. The very shape of his namesake character looks like the moon itself. So with that, I'd like to conclude with my last slide. When reflecting on all of this cross-cultural history of religion, art, and politics in Kamakura for the past 750 years or so, I'm still struck by the utter simplicity, yet actual difficulty of Zen. When asked what is Zen, the first Chinese patriarch Bodhidharma replied that it is a special transmission beyond the scriptures, not relying on words or letters, pointing directly to the mind and seeing one's own nature and becoming a Buddha. Sounds easy. Hmm. I think I'll ask Reverend Asahina to enlighten us all. Thank you so much. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Thank you so much for coming um, this evening. Um, it is a great honor to uh, sit with you here and to maybe ask you a few questions. Uh, about your experience um, and your expertise as an abbot, a uh, Rinzazen monk uh, of one of the great historic Kamakura temples of Tochiji in Kamakura. So thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for having me tonight. This is actually my debut uh, visit to the United States of America, and I'm very thankful for this opportunity that was given to me by the related partners. Uh, it's the, the New York of my dreams. <laughs> it's so wonderful. My hometown, so welcome to, welcome to my home. Um, okay. Um, so I had questions prepared, but I think maybe the audience is most interested in asking first, perhaps, what is this? Yes? Are you curious? Yes. Yeah. Uh, in Zazen meditation or in training in general in the dojo, we do not use words to signal uh, next things to do. We use sounds, and so these are the instruments that we use to signal what to do. え、this wooden stick is called a keisaku, and it was originally too long to bring into the to the plane, so I had to cut it to bring it here today. Um, but it's used to wake up uh, meditation uh, meditationers. あとはま、こういう金をあの何回か叩いて座禅の始まりとか休憩とかえ、それをこの2つを組み合わせて示すわけです。as for this bell, it's used to signal the beginning of training or the beginning of a break of training. Great, thank you so much. Okay, um, so in order to become a priest, what was your training like in the Rinzai Zen tradition? Hi, I was talking about the dojo I trained in Engakuji, which was mentioned in the slides. あの、臨済宗という宗派の本山が、ま、日本中に14本山、14箇所ありまして、修行道場は全部で40箇所ぐらいあると聞いてます。
There are 14 main temples where the Rinzai School of Buddhism can be practiced, and there are 40 total training areas where you can do that. So, two of the 14 main Honzan main temples of Rinzai are in Kamakura, which, and they are Kenchoji and uh, Engakuji. Engakuji. はい、put ourselves under waterfalls, we don't fast. What's important for training or what we actually do is arrange our daily lives in order to uh, discover within our daily routines. え、その後に、え、朝のお勤め、so in the morning we, we wake up, we of course go to the bathroom first, and then we start with a chanting, an okyo chant, a chanting that we do with a very loud voice, and then we do zazen meditation, and we also have a questioning, and then finally we do breakfast. Oh, we clean and then we do breakfast. かあの、かまを使うときに炊く薪を割る燃料ですね。え、その他に畑の仕事をしたり、あるいは宅発と言って町に出て行って、え、皆さん、皆さんから、ま、お布施をいただくことをします。which is followed by even more cleaning, or we also do samu, which is work, which consists of anything from uh, chopping firewood that we use for our cooking, working in the fields, and we also do something called keihatsu, which is uh, we go out to town and uh, we receive offerings. え、食事はその畑で作った野菜を主にして、ま、豆腐や何かそのお豆腐屋さんで売ってるものですね。油揚げとか。え、そういういわゆる肉や魚を使わないものを使って作られたものをいただきます。what uh, we eat as for food is vegetables that we grow in our fields, tofu that we get from the tofu shop or any other foods but no meat or fish. That's what we eat. 夜ご飯にはその昼の時にいただいたものをご飯と ま、お味噌汁というものを食べますが、それはとてもあの中の野菜がたくさん入っているものを作りますので、それを合わせていわゆる増水ってわかりますね。それにして、え、無駄がないようにいただくわけです。with rice and miso soup, but the miso soup is very, has a lot of vegetables in it, so what we do is we make zosui, which is a kind of porridge where you put the miso soup in the rice in order to make sure that there is no waste. で、夜になったらまた座禅の時間がありまして、ひたすら座るという座禅をするということで、ま、簡単に言うと1日それでおしまいなんです。and in the evening we do zazen meditation which is uh, endless meditation that's all we do uh, that's how we end the day <laughs> thank you so much um may i ask what is the point of this discipline what is your goal なるほどねあのその why それだけのことをしてれば修行になるんだけれどもその 
、えー、も,もちろんお坊さんになりたいからその資格を取るためにするのが、まあ、必要なことなのではあります。Sufficient for what's called training. But as for our goal, of course, we want to become priests. So these are the things we do to get the qualifications to become priests. でも肝心なことは、その修行道場のしているしきたりが何百年も前からずっとつながっていることで、やはりその我々は一種のお釈迦様に近づくためにですね、悟りを得るということを目指すわけです。But what's most crucial to remember is that what, we're, what the training that we're doing in the dojo is the same training that has been going on for hundreds of hundreds of years. So by doing the same training, we're aiming towards enlightenment. ひたすら無心に座禅をする。無心に掃除をする。無心に薪を割る。無心に畑の仕事をする。余計なことを考えないで一つのことに集中して行う行を行うことによってその途中にハッと気がつくことがそういう機会があるんです。無心 which literally means no heart、uh, by having this sentiment of 無心 or emptiness or nothingness and to have that heart while you do all of the acts of zazen and cleaning and firework その様子を修行道場の老師様はちゃんと一人一人を見てくれていてきちんとその修行者が道を外れないでちゃんと進んでいくかということを判断していただけるわけです。And the chief priest is always watching us and watching our training, and he's making sure that we're always on the right path and making sure that we're going towards our goal. その中で大事なことが全問答ですね。考案というテーマを老師様からいただいて、それに対する答えを一人一人、密室で一つの部屋の中で老師と相対して答えを述べる、そういう機会が日に何回かあるわけです。One of the most important roles that he has is to have these questionings, the Zen Mondo, which is a one on one、uh, opportunity that we have several times a day to answer Koan or、uh, case studies. So, the Tsumi Kasane is a good thing. So, the Tsumi Kasane is a good thing. So, the Tsumi Kasane is a good thing. It's the layering of all of these things that we do that leads to training, and that's, what the that's enlightenment that we're trying to get. So, with that, that sounds challenging to me.、Um, can you, what is the most challenging part of being a monk, either in training or now as an ordained priest? やはりあの我々が修行道場に入って一番最初にぶつかる大変なことといえばもう自分の都合とか自分の考え方を無理に押し通すということを抑えられてしまうような気がするそういうところから最初始まるんですね。要はそのこの環境に、まあ、日本語で「業にいれば業に従え」という言葉がありますがまさにその修行道場のしきたりになれるのがまず大変になります。One of the most、uh, challenging things, or the first obstacle that one、uh, is, is faced during this training, is that one needs to fight with one's own thoughts and perspectives. There is a phrase that、uh, translates to something like you're, you're being forced into something. So, one of the most challenging aspects of this training is to get acclimated to this environment. So, in the case of the young p e o p l 大体大学を出て、えー、入ってくる人が多いんですけれども、えー、自分はどこのいい大学を出てきたとかそうやってちょっと自慢するものもいたりするけどそんなことは関係ないみんな一緒なんだと、えー、その全くみんな一緒のところからスタートするそこがね若い人はちょっと
悔しかったり、えー、辛く感じたりすることがあります。We do have some young priests who are recent grads, and for them it's very challenging because they come in saying, Oh, I graduated this really great school, but it really doesn't matter where you went or what your background was, everyone is equal, so it's a little difficult for them to jettison their self. So, I'm going to say, 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 透き通った心になるように多分用意しろということだと思います。That is all to say that one shouldn't be submissive and this is not to erase one's personality, but this is preparation to embrace and to have a mind or heart that is translucent to accept everything. それが最初ちょっと大変だと思います。That can be a little challenging sometimes to accept. Yeah, I think we could all be a little less selfish and maybe a little more selfless.、Um, what do you enjoy most about <laughs> being a monk? あの、先ほどの話で、えーいま、付け加えると、辛いのは、眠る時間が修行道場、厳しいので、えー、すごく、えー、限られちゃうんですね。えー、本当に1日に2時間とか3時間しか寝られないという日もあるし、えー、あるいはその12月の1週間がお釈迦様が悟りを開いた時期と言われてましてその時期の1週間は、えー、布団に横にならないで座禅をしたままうとうととする時間が2時間ほど許される以外はあとは全部あの座禅をして起きてなきゃいけない。なので、慢性的に眠いので、嬉しいのは眠れること。それが一番ありがたいです。<笑> Uh, we don't have time to sleep much because we have a very harsh schedule. When we train, we can only sleep two to three hours a day usually. And in December, there is one week that is, it's said that the Buddha was enlightened.、Uh, and so for this one week, we are only allowed two hours in the day where we can do zazen, in which we can sleep while sitting. But otherwise, we are not allowed to sleep. So for me, the most fun is when I get time to sleep. I feel like maybe the audience members might also have some questions for、um, the hey. abbot、hey. Asahina. Don't be shy. This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Yes.、Um, you can, oh. oh, yes, thank you. If,、uh, if one empties one's heart and.、Um, How does one then feel compassion for other people?、あの無心になるっていうのは、心をゼロにするとかなくすという意味ではないのですよ。それは。だから、多分我々はその無心になることによって。えー自由自在な心持ちが得られると信じて行います。だからどのようにできますかと言ったら何でもできますよっていうふうにお答えしてもいいかもしれません。無心になることあ、uh,、そう、無心、which is the word I introduced earlier、which means no heart。having nothingness doesn't actually mean that you。You don't have anything. It means having an empty heart actually means that you gain freedom and fluidity. So it's not really a question of how do we have compassion, it's we can do anything with that kind of、uh, sentiment, with mushin. I don't know if that's answering your question. Yeah, emptying your self. Means you're full of potential, right? Take yourself out of the そうそうそう equation, it opens you up to everything.、Yeah. When you ask questions to the internal teacher, what questions do you ask?
。あ、どうどうどういうこと？はい、うん。あの全問答はまあいろいろなカリキュラムがあります。で、それはその初歩的な修行者に向いた、えー、シンプルなものもあるし、えー、いろいろとこう難しいものもあります。で、私たちは基本的にはそういう昔のまあ簡単に言うと偉い、えー、お師匠様ねあのー、マスターとまあ弟子のやり取りを、えー、記録したまあテキストと言ってもいい、えー、書物が残っていてそれを、えー、同じように再現するようにして、えー、いたしますだから昔から伝わっている問題に対する答えだからこの問題に対してはこの答えというのは分かっているんだけれどもそれが本当にその修行者が分かって答えているのかそうでないのかあのちゃんと分かってなくて昔から伝わっていることを丸暗記して言ってるだけなのかというのの判断はそれを指導する老子がします。で要するにその答えを自分の中から修行の上でこう絞り出すようにして発した言葉なのかそれを老子は修行道場の中でその修行者を普段から巻き割りをする時も畑の仕事をする時も食事をする時も一緒にいますからその彼らが一人一人がどれだけその修行者が問いに対して大事に自分がにいちでも考えていてでその果てに出た答えかどうかっていうのをまあ老子様が判断するそ,そういうやり取りですね。Uh, as for the questioning of the Zen Mondo, there are, there's a spectrum of difficulty from simple to more difficult. But basically, we have text records of correspondences between masters and disciples. So we have all these old questions that were passed down for generations. So you know the question and you know the answer. But the point is, you have,、uh, you have the chief priest who is watching over all these training priests. And watching over their daily lives and how they chop firewood and how, how they perform all these training routines. And the question is whether the training priest is just answering the question from memory, just the form, or whether they're answering the question, they're squeezing it out because it really matters to them and how, how much they're birthing this answer from themselves versus. Just giving the answer as a form. So that's the kind of、uh, questioning that, that happens. So, the question is, 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 the Loud、uh, sounds, sonoric responses, or sometimes you just throw your body in front of the head priest. These are also examples of such answers. いろいろ There are a lot of different kinds. Yeah. You mentioned in training、uh, a lot of、uh, work during the day and sitting in meditation. Do you do anything, do young、uh, students do anything physical to keep their body strong and able to sit? I know, 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 例えば足が太くなっちゃった筋肉がついてそうすると座禅をするときに座禅をしにくかったりする場合があってあの座禅をするのに適さないようなトレーニングをすでにしてきた人は逆に大変なんですがただ最近はむしろその、えー、座禅だけじゃなくて、えー、ちょっとヨガを取り入れたりする道場もあるように聞いています。うん So, there's a lot of physical work, as you mentioned, which 
replaces any kind of train, training, physical training that needs to happen. There is the case though that some people come who have already had a previous background of some kind of sports training, in which case sometimes if they have too much muscle in their legs, it's a little difficult to do the zazen sitting meditation. So for them sometimes it's a little bit difficult. But uh, in general, it's just the physical labor. And, but I have heard of some temples that have started doing yoga in addition to zazen. Yeah, in the opening remarks, you referred to the relationship between the monasteries and the state. And I was curious whether uh, the monastery or the practice you have has any uh, opinion on the state of the world, the environment, or the state of Japan. And w or are you divorced from all that?あ、あの私が上地寺の住職としてというわけではないのですけれども、え、ま、日本では10年ほど前に東日本大震災というえ、ちょっとあのひどい災害でま、見舞われたことがありますが、その時にえ、その時をきっかけにして、え、仏教の
和ということは修行の中でとても大切にします。和は語と言いますよね。和語。和語の和は、まあ、リングじゃなくて平和の和に合う,、はい、合うという意味ですね。はい。Uh, the, the, so the characters are 和 and 語 means together、えー。大勢で修行しますから、あのみんなが等しく、そしてまあ、あの仲良く、えー、修行する、えー、それは争いがあってはいけないしい,かさいさかいがあってはいけないでかといって、まあ、修行ですからもちろん厳しくもなくてはいけないその中で大事なのはやはり和だと思います、えー、それは善の中に和があるのか和の中に善があるのかといったらどっちが先だろうちょっとわからないけど。えーまあ、やはり先に和があるべきなのかな。はい。So the term 和語 which we use in training or 和 together means that we, we all, everyone does this equally and friendly and without fighting and training still needs to be difficult. So that's what's captured in the term 和語 But as for which came first, is Zen in Wa or Wa in Zen?、Hmm, I'm not so sure, but I'm sure maybe Wa came first. What drew you to your faith and how old were you? I was a student of the university of the university. Uh, when I graduated college, so I must have been 22. あの子供の頃にはカトリック教会の合唱団にいたことがあります。お寺のことよりも教会のお祈りの方を先に覚えました。私は私は私は私は私は私は私は私は私I went to a church today to pray. There are no more. Are there any other questions? Yep, okay.修行の、まあ、誓いの言葉と言ってもいい「シグ・セイガンモン」というお経です、えー、仏道は非常に広い大変な世界だけれども、えー、誓って自分は修行を成就してみんなを、まあ、仏道修行を、まあ、成就させる、えー、皆さんをお救いすることを、まあ、誓いますという、まあ、そういう誓いの言葉ですね。This is a promise that we make that the world is large, but that we will promise to enlighten to Buddhism. This is that kind of a prayer. And then the clappers, right? Then you start. What? Do you want to start? Zazen no hajimari no toki wa, mazu. ま
そしてもう一回えこれで座禅が始まります At the beginning of a zazen meditation, the coppers are rung twice and then once, once more. でその後でこの鐘が3回になります。And the bell is rung three times. こののの後、後修行道場だと1時間ぐらい座禅をして、えー、その後でもう1回鐘がな,なります1時間の後に鐘が1回だけなります、はい、それからこれが2回になったら休憩になる。After the zazen begins,、uh, it, it goes on for about an hour, after which the bell is rung once, and then the clappers are rung twice, and that's the beginning of your break. Before there were clocks, they used incense sticks to measure time、uh, for how long the zazen should be.、まあね、But now we have clocks, so we, we use those. Can you tell us about when a priest starts to wear robes and the significance of cutting your hair and the other aspects of the attire? Kirumono?Kirumono?Kirumono?Kirumono?Kirumono?Kirumono?Kirumono?Kirumono?Kirumono?Kirumono?Kirumono?Kirumono?Kirumono?Kirumono?Kirumono?Kirumono?Kirum
全の伝わってくる流れが別の流れになっているので、えー、修行道場のしきたりとかあるいはお経を唱えるお経の節回しとかも若干違いがあるところは、まあ、面白いところではあります。あの円楽寺と県庁寺が近所なのに違うっていう。Uh, so yeah, the Rinzai schools, the Gozan are are all Rinzai schools, so they have、uh, relations. They're very close.、Uh, they don't have、uh, frequent opportunities, but、uh, in particular, Kenchoji and Engakuji, because they're the Hongan main temples, have certain rites, rich,、uh, important rites that they do.、Uh, Uh, on certain basis, so they do have a close relation. But even、uh, Engakuji and Kenchoji, which are very close, still have、um, certain differences in the way they embrace the Buddhism. So they have some differences in the routines of the day or the rituals and the way they say certain prayers. So I think maybe only we're, I don't have a watch on, but I feel like the incense is burning down. So I, I'm Maybe one last, one last、uh, question and then we'll wrap it up.、Mm. So,、um, is there a steady influx of men who want to become priests? Or as <coughs> the world has gotten more、um, uh, commercial, has that died down? And how long does it take to become、uh, a full priest? あの、まあ、臨済宗とそれ以外の宗派でお坊さんになる時の仕組みが違うんだけれども私たち臨済宗では僧侶の資格を取るのに必ず修行道場で何年か修行しなくてはいけないんです。でお坊さんが結婚してもいいですよって言われたのが。大体明治の日本でいう明治の時代からなので、えー、それ以前は弟子を迎えて後を継がせるでもそれ以降は、えー、自分が結婚をして、えー、子供ができたら、えーまあ、一応男の子が継ぐことが多いわけですが、えー、修行道場に行って、えー、修行して、まあ、お坊さんの資格を得る。でも最近はね、えー関係ない普通にサラリーマンをしていた人が禅の世界に憧れて修行道場に入門してお坊さんになるということもあります。で短くて一番短くて1年で普通は3年から5年は修行道場で修行をしなくてはいけません。あのー、実際には、えー、ちゃんと継いでる人がいるかというと住職がいなくて困っている地域もあるのでまあ途絶えそうになっていると言っても言い過ぎではないかもしれないです。So, for different sects, the process of priesthood is different. The qualifications for becoming a priest are different. As for us in the Rinzai school, it takes many years to become a priest.、Uh, and it became okay for priests to marry in the Meiji era around the eight, late 1800s.、Uh, until then, the only way for,、um, uh, for a temple to, to live on was to, for. To, to, for a priest to have a disciple and for that disciple to become a priest and to take over the temple. But after marriage became okay,、uh, you could have a family, and if you had a boy, the boy would just start training at the dojo and would become a priest.、Um, but、uh, in recent years, it's been more common to see salarymen or people irrelevant to the f- families、um, be- tr- uh, come to become priests.、Uh, For us at the Rinzai school, the minimum is one year to become a priest, but usually it takes three to five years to become a full fledged priest. As for the question of whether the number of people who want to become priests is increasing or decreasing, I think we can say that because there are certain temples that are really having trouble finding、uh, someone to take over in certain、uh, local regional areas, it can be said that overall the number is dwindling. あのお寺のいわゆるお寺を支えてくれる周りの信者の方
、えー、そういった方々がい,、まあ、いわゆる田舎の方だとみんないなくなっちゃって、えー、お寺を支えてくれる人がいないところだとやっぱり生活の不安があるのでお坊さんがそこを務めてくれる人がいなくなっちゃうんですよね。まあ、そういうい問題は日本の各地であります特に臨済宗は修行を得るのにその数年間修行しなくてはいけないというそこがまあハードルが高いそこがまあちょっと問題なのかもしれません。There is the issue of certain temples in more local and rural areas、uh, having less and less supporters around the temples,、uh, less and less people who are living in the rural areas. In other words, that means it makes it very hard for the priests to keep on with their lives, and it's caused certain priests to disappear, and it's just made life very hard for certain rural, rural areas.、Uh, and especially, or for example, in the case of the Rinzai school, if you have something like a qualification that you need certain a number of years under your, under your belt to become a priest,、uh, that expectation is very high, so it makes it quite difficult. So, with that, I think we can all agree it's wonderful.、Um, thank you so much for keeping the tradition alive in Kamakura. And thank you for sharing your、uh, tradition with us here at the Japan Society. Thank you so much. Thank you.